Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. Yeah, I mean, a former Republican strategist came away shaken after watching the rally. He said it was a call to violence. He said the only reason you have this kind of vitriol at a campaign rally at this stage is to incite violence, either because you know you're going to lose the race, yes, <laughs> and because you need violence as a buildup to the election, including on Election Day. It, have, it could have the greatest impact in Pennsylvania, the one swing state that has a large uh, Puerto Rican community. And he said uh, violence is likely to come in many small places, not one big event. Polling places disrupted are a prime justification for for contesting the entire election of key states and throwing numerous states into chaos and contention. That's the strategy. Allison, how concerned are you about that? Um, it, it's, I mean, there's so many other strategies. That, what was the nod and the wink about the secret plan with Mike Johnson, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. The, what do you think it is? I can't, ima- I can't imagine. Wow. I think he's maybe try something to fake electors not, don't certify the election, something like that. <laughs> not see the speaker, not swear in the new yeah. Congress, maybe something like that, because he wrongly thinks that you need that. But somebody had pointed out, like, even uh, last night on CNN, that guy said that MAGA guy said that horrible thing to Mehdi Hassan. Oh, about God. Keeper. And somebody referred to this with like that and the and the Madison Square Garden rally. It's like an advent calendar of racism. Yeah, there's something new every day. Uh, and they and always say it's a joke, and we just don't get it. Oh, you're so woke. Oh, you have woke virus. You guys are just offended. Everyone needs to stop being so offended by everything. You're yeah. going to tell Puerto Ricans to not be offended when you've called their yeah. nation a garbage island. Yeah. The, oh, just chill. Yeah. And it's so far from the spirit of the Trump campaign who called America garbage can. Right. <laughs> right, right. It's different. Very different. By the way, uh, this just in. Uh, Steve Bannon has been released from federal prison one week before Election Day. If you need uh, gout or herpes medication, there's going to be a run on that. I would hurry and get that. Before I'm going to go lock my door real quick. Buys all of it. Yeah. If, you're, if you need shirts, I would buy those immediately because he's going to buy up every available shirt. That's the first thing he's going to do. It's not like Shawshank Redemption where he takes off his shirt. Steve Bannon's going to put on three shirts. <laughs> right, three shirts. Uh-huh. But it's going to be like, it feels You so good. are a delight, ma'am. Yeah. And he won't even is. have the courtesy to jet off to z Watch and Aho. Exactly. Right? <laughs> go, Speaking go of Republican, so as of Friday morning, almost 1.4 million Ohioans had already cast their ballot this November's election. But uh, with Election Day drawing close, Ohio's Secretary of State and watchdog organizations have filed new lawsuits tied to voting. Secretary Frank LaRose's case related uh, to his ability to investigate supposed non-citizen registration has no real chance of affecting who can vote in the current election. But as election watchdogs have alleged, argued for months, it could serve as fodder for future claims of election fraud if the election doesn't go a certain way. Um, you are doing a call for Sherrod Brown um, this uh, this week, correct? Right. Yeah, on November 1st. Uh, we're really excited about it. Um, I get to hang out with, like, Drew Carey and Ryan Stiles and Ed O'Neill and Carol King. And oh, it's oh going to be fun. It's going to be so, so much fun, uh, but it's such an important race because, as, as I said in my ad, we have to give her the Senate and the House, too, yeah, yeah. Or, or we can't codify Roe. And, and she said she'll, she'll get rid of the filibuster to get Roe uh, yeah. back on the books. Good. Yeah. I, I believe her. And I think um, you've said it. we got to keep Mike Johnson and, you know, uh, John Roberts' filthy paws off this election, right? we got to make it too big to, uh, too big to rig, right? Right, and if and if we don't have the Senate, it's going to be real hard to to appoint some judges of, and maybe possibly Supreme Court justices. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, but a lot of I mean, God, God bless Mark Elias, right? I mean, he just uh, man, he wins a lawsuit every. I, now it's like what every hour on the hour practically. practically. Yeah. But yeah, this Ohio lawsuit, like not like all of them, they're they're not going to win. But oh my God, how many of these have already been filed? And they're all about stopping people from voting. All of them. And as I've said, you know, uh, Kamala Harris said that uh, voting is the freedom that unlocks other freedoms. And I say Mark Elias is, unlocks voting. Yeah. Um, yeah. He keeps everybody on the rolls. He gets these RNC trash lawsuits thrown out, uh, trying to block people from voting, trying to block our military overseas from voting. They're still trying to do that in Michigan yeah, um, and Wisconsin. It's just, it's... it's <laughs> And, and what's that about, Allison? Because they always say that, oh, the military always votes for the Republican. What, why are they? It's like they're just trying to suppress. Is it other people that live overseas they assume are going to tend toward Kamala Harris because they're not insane? Like, what is it? 
Well, thanks to Democrats abroad, we have a much bigger coalition. But also thanks to the things that come out of Donald Trump's mouth, the military isn't as supportive of Republicans as they used to be. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, by the way, uh, the former D- Russell Vought, the former director of the Office of Management and Budget, budget during Trump's first term, was caught on video discussing plans to override objections from the Defense Department to employ deploy U.S. military against American citizens. He discussed plans earlier this year to get around panic on bureaucrats by having Trump invoke the Insurrection Act and then order the military to put down protests. I mean, everything. We're no John Kelly fans, <laughs> right? I mean, right. <laughs> but yeah. like it's his generals and his chief of staff that are doing this warning. Of course, I believe them. It's it's being corroborated daily, right? Ah, yeah, 100 percent. I'm not a huge Liz Cheney fan. We don't agree on a lot of policy, but uh, there's, this is, the stakes are different in this election. We all know that. Hey, all. Glenn Kirshner here. I hope you'll join me on my new audio podcast, Justice Matters. I'll be using my 30 years as a federal prosecutor and Army JAG to unpack, break down, and explain the legal issues of the day, particularly where the legal intersects with the political. Please look for Justice Matters with Glenn Kirshner wherever you generally get your podcasts.